let's talk about aerospace for a moment. Aerospace is kind of a unique work holding situation. You've got in many cases very large forgings, very large sort of machine parts. Uh, the material is often has a very high thermal coefficient of expansion. It's a light alloy. Yeah. At the same time, this is kind of a worst case scenario, and yet tolerances are, are still close. So it's like a nightmare if you come from, say, the automotive world, like I do at this point. Uh, what are the challenges of work holding for things like large aerospace components? Yes, that's exactly right. Like, you know, large parts in general are very difficult to hold. Um, the nice thing about, let's say, steel, for example, when you're machining steel, uh, large steel parts are difficult to hold, but one way to do that is with magnets. Uh, aluminum is not magnetic, uh, clearly, right? So uh, one of the things we've come up with is, is the idea of clamping it directly and actually thinking about work holding um, before you're even, as you're thinking about the part too. So um, we can actually prepare the, the bottom side of the workpiece uh, with special uh, retention knobs for the work holding. But um, in general, Holding a large plate is very difficult because there's only so many so many ways to clamp something, right? You can clamp it from the side, clamp it from the top, or maybe use vacuum technology or something like this to clamp it from the bottom. A large raw plate uh, can be very difficult because there's nothing in the middle for you to grab onto. So what you see is as you're machining in the middle, uh, you get a lot of vibration and shatter, especially if you're just holding it in from the outside. Sure. It's like um, a drum skin, like a drum head. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. and if you look at um, wing ribs or any kind of structural part for the for the for the wing, um, not only is the part really difficult to hold, but you're also machining like 95% of the material away. Uh, so the the structural components in particular, um, what we do is we sometimes we'll prepare the first operation, we make the first operation to prep it for some sort of clamping pins on the bottom side of it. Uh, and that really hold, that really serves to reduce the vibration in the middle of the part. Yeah. So a situation like that, you would design in basically a retention point and then machine that off yeah. at the end of the, as a last step? Yeah, exactly, okay, yeah. exactly. And But you also brought up a good point about the fact that uh, the thermal expansion properties are quite difficult to deal with because uh, you're trying to locate it with these precision clamping pins, but at the same time, the material is wanting to grow. Uh, and as you're machining a bunch of material away, it's also trying to flex. So you can't always just work with rigid clamping pins in the material. Uh, so it's important to find ways to compensate for that. Um, and maybe even if we take a step back, some of the ways that people have to hold these very difficult parts, for example, these complex forgings, let's say a F35 bulkhead or something, uh, the forging itself is costing $60,000 and maybe eight or nine different operations where they have to flip it back and forth to um, deal with the uh, um, deformation in the part and do the roughing and finishing. And, and that's actually uh, where a lot of this evolved was to create um, clamping points in the workpiece that didn't already exist. And, and by doing that, um, we can remove the need for shimming um, and sometimes even remove operations. So uh, there was a project we did uh, on an F-35 bulkhead and um, it was eight or nine operations and by using a special system we were able to reduce that uh, to seven operations. So we actually reduced two flipping cycles. There's, there's a few ways that you can uh, improve your spindle efficiency with work order. Uh, so number one is how you clamp the part itself. Uh, number two is how many parts you put on that table uh, to keep the spindle running. And number three is how fast you can change over either between the loading and unloading of the part or the changeover of the tooling. Uh, so point number one is how you clamp the part. Um, so by you're balancing two different things when you clamp the part. You're balancing the access to the workpiece, but you're also balancing the, uh, the security of the clamping, right? So it would be ideal if, let's say we needed to machine this piece here, it would be ideal if we could stand this up on edge yes. and machine all sides of this thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's not gonna be rigid, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be yeah. flopping around. So once again, we're balancing access to the workpiece and the security of the clamping. So one thing that works really well is by preparing that workpiece with some sort of clamping pins in the bottom side of it. That gives you a really secure hold, but it also gives you great access to the workpiece. And 
having good access to the workpiece, like you said, it reduces the number of operations required. Um, so not only are you keeping your spindle more efficient, but yes, you're also machining all of your features all together in one operation. So your tolerance has become much better between your datums. You know, you're machining your A, B, and C datum all at the same time. If you're unlimiting maybe one fixture or, uh, or jig, which doesn't itself have to be qualified, designed, inventory. Exactly. Yeah. I think most importantly, like I was saying, you really just have to think about your work holding it. And many times, uh, people will get the machine tool before even thinking about the work holding and the part shows up and they need to manufacture it. So that's one step, but take it even a step further and, and have your designers consider how this part can be made, especially the more complicated ones. If they can incorporate some sort of tooling into dead, piece, dead spaces of the part, um, have that incorporated in. It makes it a lot easier to clamp. Michael Gonsashunk says, think about work holding when you design your next part.